Welcome, OCHEM students. In this video, we're going to do a fractional distillation. Now, we've done a simple distillation, and that's where the, that's the type of distillation where we separate uh, a volatile compound from a non-volatile compound. In a fractional distillation, we have two volatile compounds whose boiling points are relatively close together. And uh, that means uh, within 40 or 50 degrees of each other, you probably want to use a, uh, or, or 40 or 50 degrees or less, you want to use a fractional distillation over a simple distillation. In our laboratory, uh, in our experiment, we're going to separate toluene, which has a boiling point of 111 degrees, from cyclohexane, which has a boiling point of 81 degrees. So the difference in temperature between those two boiling points is around 30 degrees. Uh, so we need to, to do a fractional distillation. Now, before I do the setup, I want to talk a little bit about the, the theory of the fractional distillation. And for that, I'm going to use this phase diagram, which uh, shows uh, if you look on the x-axis of the phase diagram, it's showing 100% uh, cyclohexane on the left-hand side and 0% toluene at the origin of the plot. And over on the far right, you'll see it's 100% toluene, 0% cyclohexane. And the temperature scale is on the y-axis. And so if you, if you read on the far left, you'd see the boiling point of cyclohexane is in the low 80s, and the boiling point of pure toluene is around 111. So what's all that stuff in the middle? Well, that's the mixture. That's the percent mixture of those two solutions. We're going to separate 20 milliliters of toluene and 10 milliliters of cyclohexane. So it's kind of a two to one mixture. For the purpose of the explanation, Let's pretend that the mixture is actually three to one. Let's pretend it's 75% toluene and 25% cyclohexane. And if we do that, then we can kind of to start our discussion by looking at point A on that diagram. If you look at point A, well, sh that corresponds to the mix 75% cyclohexane, 25% toluene. Well, that mixture has a boiling point of 100 degrees, that particular mixture. Now, if, if you notice the line up above, that's the composition of the vapor. The vapor at 100 degrees has a composition that's 58% cyclohexane and 42% toluene. So the liquid was 7525 and the vapor is 4258. The vapor is much more concentrated in the higher volatile compound or the or the lower boiling more volatile compound cyclohexane so let's say that we condense that vapor that 58 percent 42 percent if we condense the vapor we get a liquid that has composition uh, equal to point c on the diagram the liquid at point c would boil at 90 degrees at 90 degrees you can see the vapor would have a composition that's now 83% cyclohexane. So wait a minute, we started with a solution that was 25% cyclohexane in our example. At 100 degrees, the vapor was 58%. We condensed that vapor and then we boil that vapor off and now now, or we boil that solution and that solution produces a vapor that's 83% in cyclohexane. And if we condense that, that'll give us the uh, solution of composition D. So what I, what I want you to understand from this diagram is that the, at any particular temperature, the vapor composition is always higher in concentration in the more volatile component. And this is kind of the basis of the fractional distillation. We're going to heat the pot the pot will produce vapors. Uh, the vapors will rise up a vertical column, a column that we didn't have in the simple distillation. In fact, let's take a look at, the, at a diagram of what the fractional distillation is gonna look like. We're, we'll go to this diagram of a fractional distillation setup, and you see it's different from the simple distillation, and now that there's a vertical column there, and it shows that the vertical column is packed with something. And we'll discuss what that's about in a minute. But the vapor now has to climb up the vertical column before it can condense in the horizontal column. 
what happens in a fractional distillation is the temperature in that vertical column is highest down by the still pot, down by the flask that, that contains the liquid that we're distilling. As, you, as the vapor goes up the column, the temperature in the column decreases. So the temperature at the top, that's called the head temperature, the temperature at the top of the column is lower than the temperature down at the pot. And this is because the vapor that climbs the column condenses, redistills, condenses, redistills, and every time it condenses and redistills, the vapor gets more concentrated in the more volatile, lower boiling component. So as we do this separation of toluene and cyclohexane, what will happen is the cyclohexane vapor will concentrate at the top of the column and the toluene will continuously be returned to the still pot. So what we'll see is uh, the temperature at the head of the column will get to 81 degrees as the cyclohexane starts to boil. As the cyclohexane is condensed off, now the composition in the still pot is shifting to higher and higher levels of toluene and so the temperature is going to rise. The temp head temperature is going to rise gradually and uh, this allows us to take off uh, several fractions, thus the term the fractional distillation. We're going to do three fractions. You should be looking at a, another slide that'll show you the three fractions. The first fraction we'll collect, we're going to call it pure, and I'm putting pure in quotes. It's not going to really be pure, but it'll be mostly cyclohexane. And we'll collect that fraction between the boiling points of about 81 and 84 degrees. So when the head temperature on the thermometer is around 81 to 84, that'll be the cyclohexane fraction. When the temperature exceeds 84, we'll switch flasks and collect a middle fraction, which is a cyclohexane toluene mix. And we'll continue to collect that fraction between 84 and 100 degrees. And when the temperature at the top of the column finally reaches 100 degrees, we switch to collect the third fraction, which I'm calling again, pure toluene, pure in quotes and anything over 100 degrees is going to be mostly toluene. So we'll have a, a lower boiling fraction that'll be heavily concentrated in cyclohexane and a higher boiling fraction that's heavily concentrated in toluene and a mid fraction that's, that's a combination. So it won't have been a complete separation, it'll be a partial separation, but uh, this is the way that um, gasoline and other petroleum products are separated by by fractional distillation. So it's common, very common industrial technique, and it's a technique that we'll have to use sometimes when we have, when we have to separate materials that are closely boiling. So I think at this point, I'm ready to show you how we're gonna set up the apparatus. We're ready to set up our apparatus now, and it's all the apparatus that we had before for a simple distillation, uh, except this time we're going to use two condensers instead of one. And uh, we're going to use this, uh, the, I call it the short fat condenser. That'll be the vertical condenser and the long skinny condenser will be the horizontal condenser this time. But before, before we use this condenser, it needs to have some packing in there. And the purpose of the packing is we, we want to provide a lot of surface area in this column for the condensed vapor to mix with uh, the rising vapor. And it's a, a lot of surface area provides a place for the condensate to re-evaporate. And uh, so chemical engineers call this having a, a lot of theoretical plates in a distillation column. The more theoretical plates, the more efficient the fractional distillation. So uh, the, there's all kinds of designs for distillation columns. There's all kinds of three-dimensional packings, rings and spheres and things like that that they, that they put in here to provide this surface area for the vapor and condensate to mix. But we're gonna go with steel wool. That's what we have and it's cheap and easy. And so we have a, we have a jar of steel wool. So we're gonna take a little steel wool out of the jar and we're gonna 
pack our short fat condenser with some steel wool. Now the most common mistake when you, when you get to this point is using way too much steel wool. So, because uh, it doesn't look like much in your hand, but when it gets in that little tube, you'll be surprised how much it is. If we have too much wool in the column, the column will tend to flood. The, the condensate will not be able to get back into the, into the still pot and will form a liquid plug here. And that's not good. So we want some steel wool, but not too much steel wool. So what I do, I mean, we'll, we'll see how this is. I'm gonna start like this and I'm gonna physically kind of pull this apart. Make it finer. Maybe get rid of a little, bit, little of it here. Or it doesn't look like much now, but when it gets in the tube, you might be surprised at how much, how much it is. All right, I'm going to insert this in the tube. I need a spatula. So with the end of the spatula, I'm going to push this down into the tube. Now, maybe if I hold this up against my jacket, my lab coat, maybe you can see through there. I hope you can see some of my white lab coat coming through when you look at the steel wool. If you can't see daylight through the steel wool, that's way too much. You need to be able to see daylight through the steel wool. For a joke one year, I told the students, it needs to be thin, like the bald spot on the back of my head. One of the girls goes, Dr. Davison, you need to take more wool out then. Ha ha ha. So, we do need to see some daylight. Now we're good. Now we're ready to, to do the setup. So I'm coming over here like normal. Let me get this on the other side here. I've got the clamps. All right, sand bath. Uh, I'm not actually going to do the distillation today. I'm just going to set up the, the equipment. So we'll have the uh, the still pot, the big flask, put the stir bar in, we'll put that in the sand, we're going to clamp that. All right, now listen, my advice on this is Get this down in the sand. The same advice I gave you on the simple distillation. We want this down in the sand. Otherwise, you may be here for the whole three hours and not get any distillate over. That flask needs to be down in the sand. All right, now that's clamped. Now we put on the packed column and we hold it in place with a Keck clip. Adapter, another Keck clip. Now we'll put the horizontal column on, Keck clip. I've just put the horizontal condenser on. I'm getting ready to put the receiving flask on. Need a lab jack to raise this up. So I'll need the I'll need this thing called the vacuum adapter. That'll go on with a Keck clip. Receiving flask goes on. Okay, I don't have quite enough. I don't have quite enough lab jack here, so I'm gonna bring in another lab jack to support this. And also, I want to try to clamp. I'd like to try to clamp this column. I don't like it to have just a single support. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clamp it a couple of places. I'm gonna clamp the horizontal column. And the, maybe I can just, maybe I can do that about right in here. All 
I don't want this to tip over when the big earthquake comes. And this will be the fun one. I don't know if I can let's see. I have to try to get this one on. I'd like to get the horizontal one clamped so it won't fall over. Now it looks like I got the horizontal, I got this one right at the same spot. I'm having a hard time getting this third clamp on here. So I think, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just make sure I've got this w the receiving flask well supported by the lab jacks. This thing with two clamps on the vertical column, it should, it should stay upright, shouldn't tip over. We should, we should be good, but nevertheless, make sure this receiving flask is supported. Uh, that looks to be a lot easier than trying to wrestle that third clamp on there. Now we need to connect the cooling water. So remember it goes in the bottom connection, in the bottom. Out the top. Or maybe you put the hoses on before you set the condenser up. Anyway, there we go. In the bottom, out the top. Make sure the hose doesn't touch the back of the hot plate so, that, so you don't burn through the hose. Now we need the thermometer adapter and the thermometer. All right, so I want, I want to make sure that the O-ring on the thermometer adapter, that's up here, makes a tight seal. So push that down so there's a good seal, rubber O-ring to the glass. Now I'm going to position the thermometer bulb so, so the, the top of the blue bulb is right about the middle of this horizontal takeoff. And at that point, then I screw down the yellow cap and the O-ring inside locks the thermometer in, in position. So now the thermometer is not gonna drop, come loose, and I, made, and I made sure I've got a good seal. Before you start running the distillation, double check all of these joints and make sure they're snug. Even though there's a keck clip on there, the keck clip keeps it from coming apart, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee snugness. So make sure the system, all the joints are snug, otherwise vapor will escape. And it's gonna take the easiest way out, and the easiest way is not when it gets here. It's gonna be some other shortcut along the way. So we're just about ready to go. Now, there's one other thing that you're gonna have to do, many of you are gonna have to do, maybe not all, but uh, the people that are gonna end up setting their equipment up over in the hoods. There's a lot of airflow past your setup in the hood. And this condenser and the whole, the whole setup gets a lot of air cooling because of that rapid airflow. So to, to help this thing along, it's a good idea to wrap the flask and the vertical column in some aluminum foil. So just get some aluminum foil. We'll wrap a little bit around the, around the bottom, down here around the flask. And then wrap some wrap some around the vertical column. And yes, you can't see in there when you have the aluminum foil on there. So that's that's kind of a disadvantage. I would like to be able to see in there what's going on. But sometimes we have to 
sacrifice that visibility. So I might get another piece of aluminum foil and, and make it better around here. And uh, I've, got, I've got daylight here, so I'd probably have another piece of foil. But for the time being, I'd like to have that open so I can see when the liquid starts to boil. When it starts to boil, it's gonna take it's gonna take a while for those vapors to get up here. So here's something that the students don't understand, is you have boiling here, but the temperature here is sitting at 22 degrees. The temperature here hasn't moved. And uh, Dr. Davison, it's boiling for 15 minutes and the temperature hasn't gone anywhere. Crank the heat up, wrap it in aluminum foil, and then try to be patient because eventually the vapors will climb the column. It is going to take a fair amount of heat to drive the vapors up this vertical column. It'll help if the column's insulated with the aluminum foil, but it's still going to take a lot of heat and it doesn't happen instantaneously. So you will not see a temperature change until you see the vapor touch the bottom of the bulb. And uh, so you may have this wrapped up, but again, I kind of like to be able to have a look in there, see what's going on, see when the vapor's coming up. Once, once you see the vapors at this height, all of a sudden the temperature will shoot up. So uh, for a long time, you'll have nothing, boiling but nothing, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden the temperature will shoot up. So don't turn your back on it, don't walk away on it. Take some looks inside every once in a while. What you'll see is, if you can look in at the steel wool, you'll see the steel wool getting wet. The wool is wet. And now you know, well, the vapors are at least that high and there's a lot of condensate and you'll be able to see dripping back into the flask. Eventually, when the vapors get here, you'll see drops coming off the tip of the thermometer bulb as well. At that point, then the vapor will enter the condenser. You got the water going in this condenser, so uh, the vapors will condense here and collect over in the, in the flask. Now for this separation, we're going to need several flasks. So the first flask, that's for fraction one, the so-called pure cyclohexane fraction. Second fraction is the mixed fraction, and the third fraction, toluene fraction, will need a third receiver. So this is, this is how you set up the fractional distillation. You pack it with the steel wool. Don't pack it too tightly. If, it does, if you do, the column is going to flood and uh, you'll never get the vapor up here. So flooding is no good. Uh, make sure you can see daylight when you look through the condenser and you look through the steel wool. Wrap the column with aluminum foil and then be patient. The vapors will eventually get here. You're probably going to have to crank the heat in order to, in order to get this to go. So I think uh, that's, those are the secrets of the fractional distillation and uh, I'll be coming around to see how you do.